Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 465 of Probably Viewing. Today I'm talking about Marillion album, Holidays in Eden. Yeah, it was released in 1991, just a few months after the Union album. Wow, can you see what I did there? I've almost gone chronological on your ass. Oh, yes, it was the sixth studio album from Marillion, though you could consider it as their di difficult second album, because it was the second album with Steve Hogarth. I remember that I think the, f the first single was Cover My, Cover My Eyes. Uh, again, a, lot of, a couple of the songs on here were from Hogarth's um, previous band, uh, How, How We Live. Um, Cover My Eyes was one of them. I think it was called Simon's Car. And of course there's also Dry Land, which was uh, another single. I think I've got, I've got a VH, I had a VHS of that, of them doing that on Pebble Mill at One, I believe, in a, in, a, in a garden of some stately home. I'll have to dig it out. It's in the archive somewhere. But I digress. Yes, it's a funny, this is a bit of a funny album, because it's the band, you get the feeling that they're not really sure what way to go, because it starts with Splitting Her In Heart, which is a, I mean, again, it's, it's a good old... Um, Opener of one of the live concerts, isn't it? It's a very atmospheric, very good at doing atmosphere, and um, and they kind of they're veering from from like I say, very very poppy, very pop sensible songs like um, Cover My Eyes and Dry Land and Waiting to Happen, and then you've got this whole kind of like I say, hard rock proggy, splintering heart. Uh, um, Rake's Progress, A Hundred Nights thing, This Town, God, you know, there's, um, yeah, there's, it's a, it's an album where they're kind of split in two. It's a, it's a, it's a schizophrenic album, and while I, I enjoy the songs uh, on the album, I, I just find it a very strange record to listen to because you do get the sense that they're, they're pulling in two different directions. And again, I think it's because. You know, maybe there was a lack of material, and so they're using old ideas, and you know, lack of focus. Perhaps I couldn't possibly, I couldn't possibly comment any further than that. Um, but again, I remember when I bought it when it came out, and you know, I was a big fan of um, oh, cover my eyes. Uh, I remember getting the there was a boxed version CD, and there were some other tracks on there. Um, oh, what was it? There was a How Can It Hurt, a collection, and The Party, I think, was on the was on the box set. So I'd heard some of the stuff before the album had even dropped. I quite like that those those tracks actually. I thought it was a very good um it was a very good um C D single box set type thing. Um Yeah, I mean the problem is is you know, you've got tracks like uh, No One Can, which is a bit sappy for me, and it's a bit girly. Uh-oh, the red light's flashing. I might have to change the battery. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause elegantly and then change the battery. And you you didn't even notice. You didn't even <laughs> see the joy in there. Um, so, yeah, you, and you, like I say, you've got these kind of sappy songs like No One Can and, you know, and Dry Land. Yeah. Which I'm not a great fan of, you know. But there are some hooky, hooky stuff in it. And the last section, this town, uh, the Rakes Progress, and a hundred nights, they all, you know, run into each other. They are really, they're all the same song, aren't they? Really, and it tells a story. And I do like, I do like the story that is told, and it's very dramatic, and it's very enjoyable, and it's almost, it's almost like one of those old proggy. Uh, proggy songs with like I said a story being told amongst the tunes um, yeah and what you get with this this is the oh god I can't remember when it was put out 1998 was it really that long ago god crikey feels like yesterday um, this has got a second disc with all the b-sides and extra stuff on it because they did a really good um, a really good single campaign with this with lots of 12, 12 inches and picture discs and lots of um, live material and they collect it all on on the second disc so it's well worth picking these up if I don't know if these are still in print I imagine they're probably not but you do get a whole album because they've even got Eric on it Eric well, I think the title of the album was meant to be Eric wasn't it I think I think that's right Eric <laughs> did I dream that <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, dear, Darren, you've never listened to this album at all. You don't even know who this Marillion is. Um, but yeah, I also love the cover by Bill, Bill Smith Studio, um, uh, painted by Sarah Ball. I just, again, you just don't get good artwork like that anymore on album sleeves, even even on Marillion album sleeves. Um, I just think it's very unique. And uh, and again, first time they they dropped the uh, the jester. I call it can I call it the jester logo? That seems fair enough. Um, so yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a funny old album. And when you think about stuff like uh, how can it hurt a collection, and uh, you know, you, you, those tracks could have gone on and swapped around and made it a much more you know if they dropped drop some of the pop stuff. <laughs> I think it could have been a, a, a more satisfying album for, you know, a masculine young buck like myself. Look at me. Look at me. I'm so masculine. Ah. Um, so, yeah, in terms of rating, because I'm going to have to, I've just realised what the time is. I've left this too late to do, and I've got to, I've got to run out the door. Um, blimey, rating it. That's a tricky one. Again, you've got to remember it was a time... It was a time there was uh, there was not very much progressive rock out there. It was just this and Union. Not that bad. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it... Ooh, three parties out of five. That's three parties out of five. Maybe a half. I could, I could go to a half. What do you reckon? Three and a half? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's somewhere in between there. Three and a half on a good day. Three on a hypercritical day. Um, but it is interesting to hear them moving on from Season's End. And again, it's a kind of a transitory album. Again, and then they do Brave, which is quite different. You know, there's still some of the uh, the bombast that you hear on this transfer to the Brave album. But with this, you do get the feeling that they are, you know, after the... After seasons end, they were kind of trying to find their feet. Um, difficult second album. Yeah, we'll go with that. You know, my name's been Darren. I've been talking about um, Holidays in Eden by Marillion, which was released 24th of June, 1991. Oh, God, I was 20 years old. I had air down to my arsehole. I was handsome. I was beautiful. And now look at me. You too could end up like this. It's all hard living. It's all the hard living, you know. And on that bombshell, there's only one more thing to say, and that's... Progon?